in this section uh, we will discuss about our next uh, failure scenario uh, so the impact of this will be that uh, your vpc orphan ports will get uh, isolated on the your uh, secondary device so the uh, case is that when your vpc peer link goes down and your secondary device uh, shut down all the member ports plus the vpc uh, vlan svis then our uh, orphan ports will be isolated because uh, we know that your uh, orphan ports are not a part of VPC, right? They are connected only on the one VPC peer. And still uh, they will be impacted when your peer link goes down because this is the default behavior in the VPC that uh, when your VPC peer link goes down, so, and uh, your VPC secondary device uh, uh, get to know why the VPC uh, peer keep alive link that uh, your primary device is still alive then it is going to take uh, one decision right so it is going to shut down all the member ports plus the svis or you can see uh, you can say that the vpc vlan svi so it is going to shut down all of those uh, switch uh, virtual interfaces so the solution of this uh, situation is that we need uh, to use uh, the command dual active exclude interface VLAN and the VLAN number. So we'll say it uh, with a practical. Let's uh, quickly see this uh, topology. So we do have our uh, VPC uh, peer devices 7K1 and uh, 7K2. So you can see here that R1 is connected to uh, N7K1 and we have one server uh, that is server one, which is connected to uh, here N5K1 and N5K1 is connected to N7K1, but we can see that uh, N7K1, the link between N7K1 and N5K1, it is not a part of VPC because N5K1 is not connected to N7K2. So or channel 2 on N7K1, that is a part of, or that is the orphan uh, ports. So both these ports, Ethernet 1 by 3 and 4 in port channel 2 on N7K1 will be part, will be a part of the orphan ports because uh, it is not a part of VPC. So now when we consider that uh, the peer link goes down, so let's assume that uh, N7K1 is the secondary device. So it is going to shut down all the VPC member ports. So for example, this is the port channel three, which is a part of VPC. So it is going to shut down both the ports, E1 by five and one by six, which is a part of VPC three or port channel three. And also it is going to shut down the SVIs or the VPC VLAN SVIs. So let's say we do have some SVIs here, SVI 10, 20 and 30 so it is going to shut down all the svis so now we can see here that let's say we have server one uh, which is having the ip 20.1.1.100 and its uh, default gateway is the svi ip of vlan 20 uh, on n7k1 so because on n7k1 the svi is shut down so server one, server one will uh, will be isolated, right? So it will not be able to communicate to router one or for, uh, the router one IP is 40.0.0.100, okay? Let's see it uh, with the practical now. So I'm on N7K1, if I do a show VPC, so on N7K1, we do have only one VPC, that is port channel three, as we have seen in our diagram also, right? And the port channel two, if I do a show port channel summary. So port channel two, uh, we are having two ports, Ethernet one by three and Ethernet one by four, but uh, on port channel two, we do not have any VPC. It's a, just a normal uh, port channel. So we do have only one VPC that is going to n5k2 which is into port channel 3 also we can check the orphan ports with the command uh, show vpc orphan ports so we can uh, we can see that only port channel 2 is a part of orphan ports on n7k1 so now let's uh, test our uh, failure scenario so 
let's check first the vpc role show vpc role so n7k1 is the secondary device if i do a show cdp neighbor cdp neighbor so n7k1 is connected to router uh, connected to a router and uh, n7k1 port is ethernet 1 by 7 show run interface ethernet 1 by 7 so it is having ip address 40.1.1.1 and if i go to the router the router ip address is show ip interface brief it is having the ip address 40.1.1.100 and the server ip is 20.1.1.100 so we can see that right now the router is able to ping the server because we do have one default route at the router which is and the next stop is the n7k n7k1 right uh, n7k1 interface ethernet, ethernet 1 by 7 is having ip 40.1.1.1 and if i do a show ip interface brief then we also do have vlan 20 20.1.1.252 which is having the default gateway for the server okay or the server one which is having the ip address 20.1.1.100 so now let's uh, test our condition so as i as uh, we have already checked that uh, n7k1 is the secondary device so now let's uh, shut down our vpc peer link first of all let's verify show vpc peer keep alive so we can see here that our vpc peer keep alive link is okay right it's working and if i do a show vpc so vpc is also working we have port channel one which is our uh, vpc peer link and we have one VPC that is port channel three and the status is up. Also, if I do a show IP interface brief, all the SVIs are up VLAN 10, VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. VLAN 20 IP address is the default gateway for the server. Okay. Now, uh, let's shut down the VPC peer link. Interface port channel one, I will say shut down. Okay, show VPC. Now we can see that port channel three is down, right? Because it is the VPC secondary device. Show VPC role. Now if I do a show IP interface brief, now you can see that all our SVIs are down. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. If I go to the router again, and if I check the connectivity from router to the server, now we can see that uh, the communication is broken. Even though the link which is uh, going to N5K1 and which then goes to the server one, that is a part part of a port channel it is not a part of vpc right if i go to the diagram so we can see here that uh, the link which is going to uh, the n5k1 this is not a part of vpc so now our orphan device which is n5k1 or server one which it, it's now isolated right it is not able to communicate to our router so as we discussed uh, or as we have seen in our slide that uh, the solution of it is to use the dual active command so how we can do that so if i go to n7k1 first let's make our peer link up and then we will test it again so now if i do a show vpc so vpc3 is up and uh, if i do a show functional summary uh, show portional summary so portional 2 is up if i do a show vpc orphan ports so portional 2 is a part of or is a orphan port right so now if i go to show an interface or if i do a show run vpc so this is the command that i configured so the command is dual active exclude interface VLAN 20. 
So the SVI that I do not want to get shut down when the VPC peer link goes down, we need to put it here. So the command is dual active exclude interface VLAN and the VLAN number. So now we will see the effect of it. Okay. I will go to the router and uh, let's do a continuous ping. So it is pinging to the server. Now, if I go to NCNK1 and if we shut down the peer link, if I do interface port channel one and let's say shut down. Now, if I do a show IP interface brief, now you can see here that VLAN 10 SVI is down. VLAN 30 SVI is down, but VLAN 20 SVI is still up, right? Because of this command, if I would do a show VPC role, it is a secondary device. So it has already taken the action. If I do a show VPC, now we can see that port channel three is down because it's a VPC secondary device, right? And as per the rule, it is going to shut down its member ports plus the SVIs, but now because we are running if you do a show run vpc we have excluded interface vlan 20 from this condition so that is why we can see here that if i do a show ip interface brief vlan 20 is still up but all the svis vlan 10 and vlan 30 they are down so now if i go to the router now we can see that our server is still reachable now, in this case, our uh, orphan devices are not isolated. So this is the benefit of, uh, or we can see, we can say that this is the use of dual active exclude interface VLAN command. Okay. In our next section, we will discuss about the VPC split brain scenario. Thanks for watching.